How is it going everyone? Welcome to the channel. Mamluks are one of the most overlooked nations in EU4. Most players don't play them because we see AI Mamluks die to Ottomans every time. However, at the start of the game, Mamluks start as a second great power, above everyone else bar Ming, and that includes the Ottomans, and their army size is bigger than Ottomans too. Combine this with all the different avenues you can expand in, and Mamluks start looking rather tempting. They also have a unique government type which is really strong. Playing as Mamluks, you can cherry pick your expansion strategy. You have the option to go conquer North Africa or East and South Africa or all of Arabia or tame Ottomans and go conquer Europe. The key early game strategy is to restrict Ottomans expansion. Once you accomplish that, you can either eat them up slowly or don't worry about them anymore and go expand in Africa, Arabia and Asia. So for this video, I made two separate guides for different playstyles playing as Mamluks. One favors a more expansionist playstyle which I call Marauding Mamluks. And the second one is playing more to the strengths of Mamlukian national ideas with focus on getting rich by trade while still expanding in Asia and Africa. I call this playstyle Mercantile Mamluks. Let's start with our expansionist playstyle Marauding Mamluks first. For opening moves, get your level 1 advisors. Rival Ottomans, Venice and Kara. Get a general, but don't get one from estates just yet. Armors start with very high influence. In preparation for war against Byzantine, get 11 stacks, 7 infantry and 4 calves in your transports and sail next to Constantinople. Embargo Venice. This fulfills the mission and you get free claims on some Arabian nations. Improve relations with Hungary and Medina and build spy network on Fezzan. You should declare a no-CV war against Byzantium as soon as possible. They will likely have a minor ally in either Serbia, Bosnia or Albania, which shouldn't be a problem. The goal here is to vassalize Byzantium. This blocks the Ottomans' expansion into Byzantium and it really handicaps them going forward. Despite the no-CV war here, the aggressive expansion is minimal. Once you get them as a vassal, you're good on the first step to defeating Ottomans. Next, declare on Fezzan as soon as you get a claim. They are guaranteed by Tunis and usually ally one of Jared or Togard. You should be able to take them on and full annex them. You can release Tripoli here if you want as Tripoli has cores on Tunis, but you will go about diplomatic relations, so it's your call. As Mamluks, Ottomans are your number one enemy. They are the only real threat you have early game and you have to deal with them soon. Vassalizing Byzantium is a very good start, as Ottomans don't get Constantinople. Next, you should look to conquer Dulkadir, if Ottomans haven't already done that. If that isn't an option, go for Ak Koyanlu. The idea here is to make a wall that prevents Ottoman expansion in the east. Even go for Karaman if they are still available. Also, you will have to attack Ottomans themselves fairly soon. But make sure you have an ally in the north. Ottomans will have naval superiority over you, and they will block the straits, so you can't occupy their provinces in Europe, that includes their capital Adirne. Plus, Ottomans will stomp your vassal Byzantium and siege them, resulting in even less war score for you. So make sure you have an ally in the north. Best time is to attack them when they are already at war with Europeans. You can take some Anatolian provinces to block their expansion, and if you want, you can give some provinces back to Byzantium as well. If you can vassalize Byzantium and block Ottomans' eastern expansion in the first 20 years or so, Ottomans won't be an issue in future. Now you can eat them bit by bit whenever your European ally will honor the call. African wars are very easy, but you might have to keep a stack of army there for rebels most of the time. Keep rampaging down and eat all of Africa. This also helps your finances as you get the trade income and the gold provinces down there. Arabian nations won't hold up to you either and you get free claims from missions too. Feed some provinces to your vassal Hejaz and take rest for yourself. Now that you have Ottomans under control, start conquering the provinces they would have. The provinces in Caucasus are fairly rich, so you should get them soon, but watch out for that aggressive expansion. You should conquer Kara sooner rather than later as well, as Timurids will look to take all that land for themselves. Once you have the Hormuz area locked down, you can hop onto the Indian subcontinent and enlighten those Indian nations as well. 
Maghreb region has the Berber ideas which means plus 50% coring costs for you. Always release vassals when you conquer lands here, preferably the ones who have cores on your next North African enemy. Once you have eaten up Ottomans, you're going to expand in Europe. It will all depend on where you can find a foothold and who your allies are. Keep looking for avenues in the Balkans, the Italian peninsula and Iberia. Timurids usually rival Mamluks at this point, in which case you can ally Russia and conquer Persian provinces. Or if Timurids hasn't rivaled you, you can ally them and beat up Russia, which I like more as I want those Circassian provinces for the Mamluks government abilities. We'll discuss it a bit more in the game mechanics section. And that's basically all the conquests you will need to do. One of the best things about playing Mamluks is that you can distribute your aggressive expansion in so many different directions that it really isn't a problem at any point. You start with two vassals in Hejaz and Fadl, and you'll keep your vassals count high as you conquer North Africa and vassalize a nation with good scholar of your choice. I like taking the 10% AE reduction scholar for most part, but make sure you're integrating the vassals timely as well. Mamluks start as guaranteeing Medina and you can easily diplo vassalize them early game. You are the strongest Sunni out there, so it's only fair you get to control Mecca and Medina. You will get an event Fate of the Holy Cities. Choose the option to hand over Medina to Hejaz. This gives you more prestige and you will integrate Hejaz later anyways. Mamluks are also guaranteeing Cyprus at the start and you can wait for the Cyprus events to fire, but you don't have to. If you are at your relationship limit, let them go and capture them later through conquest. You need one major European ally to counter Ottomans early game. Ideally, this would be a rival of Ottomans. This ally will also help you conquer rest of the Europe mid-game. As I mentioned earlier, you should also look to ally either Timurids or Russia mid-game. This will deter coalitions and make your wars easier. As you can see, with Mamluks, you can really expand fast in a lot of different directions. Your bottleneck is actually going to be a coring cost despite the plus two admin skill of your Mamlukian rulers. Which brings us to ideas. With ideas, admin is a must have for the coring cost reduction. Make it a priority to get the cost reduction first and the mercenary discounts are great as well. You will realize manpower is another big thing holding you back. Quantity ideas will solve that problem. If you plan on staying Mamluks, you could look into going humanist. But if you're looking to form Rome, you should go religious. It really synergizes with their national ideas. Next is influence. You will have a lot of vassals in this playthrough and having that diplo annex cost reduction is really nice. Then we can go defensive to beef up your armies with that extra morale, then diplo for faster diplo annexing, and then offensive and quality for late game firepower and siege ability. A quick note about navy here, I usually don't bother building any extra ships till mid game. Ottomans have a big navy so it's not worth building anything in the Mediterranean Sea until they are neutralized. Once you start expanding in India, you can build heavies in the Indian Ocean and start to expand your naval force. And that's all you need to know for your expansionist gameplay as Mamluks. We will discuss farming Rome briefly in the game mechanics section as that's an important part of the expansion plan. But first, let's look at our mercantile Mamluks guide. The national ideas of each nation gives you an inclination of how it's supposed to be played. With Mamluks, there's a fair amount of trade bonuses and we will look to exploit just that. The opening moves are the same as marauding Mamluks except we will not attack Byzantium. In this playstyle, our focus is on getting more income. So we need to get those rich trade nodes in Africa and move to Asia. It's a good idea to take our Fazan early on as it gives you a good platform for expansion into North Africa later, if you want to. Even though you aren't going to attack Ottomans directly early game, stopping their expansion is important or they will become too strong mid game. Conquer the Turkish Beliks and nations near Caucasus Mountains in the first 50 years or so. As I mentioned earlier, Ottomans are your main adversary. But do you need to attack them? Not really, as long as you have restricted their expansion and you have strong allies, you will be okay. You can of course attack them with your allies, but it isn't super necessary for what you're trying to achieve in this guide. Look for an opportunity to form coalition against Ottomans whenever possible. It's a good way to check their progress and you get an event for it. Africa is your main conquest alley early game. As I mentioned before, these wars are fairly easy and you will be able to take on everyone. Just watch out for those nasty rebels. Arabia is important. You need to make sure no other nation has encroached on your Arabian soil. You can take your time conquering it, but really these are just minor nations and you won't have any issues. Once you've conquered Africa and Arabia, you can look at India and Southeast Asia if you're feeling ambitious. Release vassals everywhere. They will save you admin points and cause less rebel outbreaks. 
Diplo has sliced Medina to get the fate of Holy City's event, then hand them over to Hejaz. And you need one major European ally and one of Russia or Timurids to deter Ottoman attacks. With ideas, starting with admin again is always a good idea here. Then go exploration. You should prioritize exploring the Indian Ocean and Southeast Asia. There's a lot of money in Spice Islands and you will be keeping most of it from your control of trade nodes as well. Once you have a few provinces in Southeast Asia, start conquering them. You will be unchallenged there. Next, I would advise Humanist, which will help with the rebel problems in Africa. Then quantity for manpower, then expansion for the boost to your colonial power as well as more trade income. Next, I go quality for better army and navy because you will have to build a significant naval force early game as well. Next, you can either go influence or trade or another military idea depending on what you're going for late game. Now let's look at some of the Mamluk specific game mechanics. I usually don't go into very basics on my tutorials as you can find most of that information on wiki or reddit threads such as why the Mamluk's government is unique. But I wanted to mention the government abilities here as it wasn't very clear on the wiki. Out of the three cultural interactions, the first one, which gives 5% tech discount, is available for everyone. The other two depends on your ruler's culture. So keep in mind when you select your ruler. If your ruler has a lot of provinces of his culture, you will get more ducats or manpower from the two abilities. The trade-off is that he will start with lower legitimacy. Also, while selecting your ruler, you will always get an option for a Circassian ruler who starts with 100 legitimacy and gives you 15 army tradition. This option has historical context and you can read all about the Burji dynasty. You won't be able to use the two government abilities in early game with a Circassian ruler though, as you don't have any provinces with Circassian culture. And it might be a while till you get some of those provinces as they are usually allied to Muscovy. But the 15 army tradition is pretty nice and the ruler will always have high legitimacy. Amir's estate start with a lot of provinces. This also has a historical context. Start revoking coastal provinces first when you can and bring their land percent down to 10. Also give dimmies any land you can. They give tech discounts when loyalty is over 60 and some nice tolerance bonuses. Dimmies are hands down the best estate in game. With Mamluks, you can form three different nations fairly easily. You need admin tech level 20 to form Egypt. It's not really worth it to be honest, except for maybe role playing purpose if you really just want to form Egypt. You keep the Mamlukian ideas but you lose the Mamluk government so it might actually be a bit worse. To form Arabia, you need these provinces and level 10 admin tech. Once you form Arabia, you get to keep both the Mamluk's government type and their national ideas. So all you're getting are some permanent claims and a cool color but that's about it. Conquering the required provinces won't be a huge deal as you will take over Arabia anyways. Remember, starting with the upcoming Therma update, Arabia is an endgame tag which means you cannot form new nations from it. Rome has one of the best national ideas in whole game and they are very well suited for an expansionist playstyle. You can form Rome if you have the required Anatolian provinces, if Ottomans and Byzantium don't exist and if your primary culture is Turkish. I think playing as Mamluks is the easiest way to form Rome. You don't get the achievement you get by playing Karaman, but forming Rome starting as Karaman has a lot of RNG elements to it. Additionally, with the Marauding Mamluks guide, you're naturally going to eat up Ottomans and integrate Byzantium eventually, so forming rooms makes sense. The only thing remaining is to have Turkish as your primary culture, which involves culture shifting. It's considered an advanced mechanic, but it's really easy. If you aren't sure how to do it, you can check out my guide on it. It basically involves getting more state development with Turkish culture than other cultures. If you remain a Sultanate as Mamluks, you can culture shift to Turkish directly and form Rome. But if you upgrade your government to Empire, you will have to culture shift twice as Turkish is a part of your primary culture group. So you will have to shift another culture out of your culture group, then shift back to Turkish. It will require a bit more monarch points. Forming Rome is always a good idea. I mean, just look at the color. And you also get some of the best national ideas. Also, the government type changes to the Ottoman government. Yes, you lose the awesome Mamluk government type, but the plus five max absolutism from Ottoman government is pretty great late game. And that was all you needed to know about Mamluks and how to play in two different playstyles. I hope this guide helps out EU4 players looking to try their hand at Mamluks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.